So in this video, I'm going to talk about variable and constant rates of change. Uh, now, we're going to talk about this in, in sort of um, fairly vague terms to begin with, and then we'll uh, get more specific with it in a, in a moment. So if we take a look at um, these four vessels that you were to fill with water, let's say. Now, if you fill this jug with water, let's say you just turn on the tap full, full power, and then you don't touch the tap again. Uh, this height is going to be uh, increasing at a constant rate. Okay, so we need to look at these um, graphs and sort of match up what our graph is. So this is going to be the volume, which you could also think about in terms of time. Because I've turned the tap on and it's running at a constant rate, the water, the amount of water is coming out, uh, let's say 100 mils every 10 seconds or whatever it might be. Um, so this is volume. We can also, I might even just draw that in as well. Um, we can also call that time. Now, in the case of our square jug, the height's just going to steadily rise. Um, so we can look at this one. See this slope, this straight line slope? we can call that a constant rate of change. So with this particular shape, it's a constant rate of change right up until you get to the neck. And if you've ever filled a jug, you would have experienced this. It's slowly rising. And then as you get to sort of the bit where it tapers up, all of a sudden the water starts coming out and you, maybe it'll like overflow. Um, now, it's important to note constant rate of change from here to here. And then the rate of change changes. It becomes steeper but it is still constant. So we can sort of draw a line between this shape and that one. Those graphs match up. Okay, now in terms of our triangle beaker here, so we're gonna get a variable rate of change from here to here, because as it's getting narrower, the uh, speed at which this thing is going to fill is gonna get faster and faster and faster. This can be shown by, oops, this can be shown using uh, this graph over here. So as time goes on, it's getting faster and faster and faster. You can see our, our rate of change is getting steeper and steeper and steeper. And then when it gets to the neck, it becomes a constant rate of change, quite a steep constant rate of change. But looking at our little, uh, this looks like some sort of science flask type thing. Um, the vase or the flask gets larger. So as as it goes from there to there, the waters, the, the height is slowing down. It's taking longer and longer. So you can see that with this graph here. It starts off filling quite quickly, but then it slows down, slows down, slows down until about that point there where the beaker starts to come back in again. So it starts getting faster and faster and faster again until we get to the neck, at which point we hit that constant rate that really fast constant rate. Um, so that's that one. We can draw a line direct from this flask to this flask. And I won't go through all of this flask here, but you can see what's happening, I hope. Okay, so there we're filling our flasks at various times. Some have variable rates of change, some have constant rates of change. A constant rate of change is a straight line, a variable rate of change is a curve. That might be a bit important. All right, moving on. Graph, I just want to talk about it for a minute. Uh, it's a particle traveling in a straight line. The graph shows the distance of the particle from a fixed point over a period of 20 minutes. So when it starts at time zero, before it's even started moving, it's five meters away um, from the fixed point. And then over the next three minutes, it gets it's further away from the fixed point. It gets to 10 meters away from the fixed point. It was traveling, um, not in a straight line, but it was traveling at a constant rate, constant rate from here to here. And if you do like rise over run, you can find out what that constant rate was. It's five over three, whatever that is. Um, that's about 1.6, so 1.6 meters per minute. Now from time three to time seven, uh, it stays at that point. So it stopped moving. It just, it was traveling at a speed and then it stopped, it looked like it hit a wall because it stopped immediately and then it got here and it stayed there for four minutes. And then here, 
we have a variable rate of change. Okay, you can see it's going back to the origin. It's going, it's starting, and it's it's moving quite quickly. And then it starts to slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. So the steeper your gradient, whether you're going downwards or whether you're going upwards, the faster you're going. The steeper, the faster. So here it's quite steep, so it's going quite fast, and then it's slowing down because it's not very steep at all. Here it's it's quite steep, so it's going quite fast. So that's probably important information. The steep gradient in terms of this, which is called a displacement time graph, the faster it's going to go. So steep gradient, fast. Now in terms of gradients, we can stick with this for a little bit. Now this curve, you can see, this has a positive gradient. So it's going, if, if you were driving like a car up this thing, from always from left to right, now cars always drive from left to right. If you were driving, you're always going uphill. And that means that we have a positive gradient. A positive gradient. Similarly here, we have a negative gradient. If I was to draw my car on that, it would be going down that hill. So it has a negative gradient. Now, this curve here is interesting because it has a positive gradient. It's going uphill. Think of like a roller coaster. Chug, 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 chug. Gets to our turning point. Now, at our turning point, the gradient isn't positive. It's not negative. It's zero. You're sitting on a flat line. Now, just for a moment, just for a split second, and then you start going downhill and the gradient's negative. So positive gradient, zero gradient, negative gradient. And here, here you have a flat gradient um, for a long time. It's, it's flat the whole time. It's not increasing, it's not decreasing. It's not positive, it's not negative, it's just zero. Flat, flat line. Okay, so here's a quick example. Um, it says, for the graph shown here, um, between negative five and two. So we're not interested in anything beyond that, but we're only interested between negative five and two. Use interval notation to describe the set of values of x for which the rate of change of y with respect to x is negative. All right, so in other words, show the points where your car would be going downhill. All right, so our car would be going downhill from here, from this turning point to there. Okay, so using interval notation, I can say that, uh, I'll just type it here, I can say uh, when x um, is, uh, I need my brackets here, uh, between negative 3, negative 3, and 0. Oops. So that's, we're going to have a negative gradient. Now, here, you can see we have a positive gradient from negative 5 up to there and from 0 to 2. Might just use some different notation here just because I feel like it. Uh, so between negative 5 is less than x, uh, negative 3, um, and um, where are we? Zero to two. Positive gradient. So very important you understand the difference between a negative gradient going downhill and a positive gradient going uphill. Finally, or well, maybe we'll do a little bit more. A car travels from Kopahunga to Chalagam, which is a distance of 150 kilometers in two hours. Assuming the car travels at a constant speed, draw a distance time graph and calculate the speed. Okay, so first of all, distance time. So time is going to go on the x-axis. So there's my two-hour mark, um, 150 kilometers. So it travels 150 kilometers at a constant speed. So that means that it's going to be here. Let's see if I can draw a, a line here. Okay, there we go. Now that should pass through the origin. Boom. Because it's traveling at a constant, no, that should pass through the origin. Pass through right there. Boom. Now, because it's passing through the origin going up to 120, so it should go up to about there. There we go. There's my drawing, and it says calculate the speed. Now, you should remember that speed equals distance 
over time. Um, make sure you use it over there. Uh, in this case, it's just the gradient. Speed's just the gradient. It's the rate of change. Speed is the rate of change. And the rate of change here is rise over run, which is uh, speed is equal to, um, it's 150 over 120. And a calculator will tell you that. The calculator will tell me that's 13.75. Think about your units. I used 120, which is minutes, and I used 150, which was kilometers. So that's 13.75 kilometers per minute, which is a bit of a strange unit. What I really should have done is speed equals 150 divided by 150 divided by two hours. That would give me 75 kilometers per, and two is hours. That makes more sense. Okay, so just be careful with your units. Think about what numbers you're using when you do these things. All right, so that's about as far as I want to go with that. There's a lot of things to take in there. Remember what we're talking about. We're talking about variable and constant rates of change, and a rate of change is our gradient. Okay, so just try to keep that in mind. Go through some of these questions. Ask me if you've got any problems.